Hello and welcome to a 1UP3 Blender tutorial. This tutorial is going to be part one of a series where I'm going to make a um, side-scrolling shooter. So I'll be doing tutorials every step along the way and hopefully it'll be very helpful for anyone that's trying to make a full game, however small it is. Um, and you should be able to apply most of what you see to almost any kind of game. So to start out, I'm going to do a quick tutorial on setting up the motion, general motion, for your character. And to start, we're going to take this box that's already there. We're going to uh, shrink it on the Z axis, which you can do by hitting S and then Z. The, by hitting Z, you select which axis you want to shrink it on. So let's shrink it down to where it's about the size. This is going to be our floor, essentially platform. And now since we're doing a side scroller, we're going to scale it up on the Y axis, same process essentially. And then a little bit on the X axis. All right. And now we're going to add another cube and by to do that, we're going to hit at shift A or you can also do that in here in the create tab. It's kind of new, so I'm not used to doing that, but now we're going to shrink this down bring it up and then we're going to scale it on the z-axis. We want it to look about the size our character is going to be. So there we go. Then we're going to name it and this is essentially the character bounds for the, the collision bounds for our character. So I'm going to name it character collision and what a collision bound is, is it's kind of a box that will surround your character, the mesh and the armature that controls its movement and whatnot. But essentially this is what's going to react to all the um, collisions. It's going to react, going to decide your physics when you fall and it's what we're going to assign our movement to and the armature and mesh will follow that along. So essentially, it's what we're going to be working with today. And I'm going to name it Carrick. Oops, you need to learn how to spell. Character Collision. And you want to make sure that you're consistent with your cap. Your, it, everything in Blender is case sensitive. So when we're doing our logic, if you're not doing things the same or spelling them right, um, it will cause problems, so you want to make sure you're consistent on that. Next we will want to go, well first, one thing we can do is change the, okay, we sorry, we need to change this to Blender Game real fast, and we want to change this to GLSL in the camera box, this menu. All right, and then we need to go to the physics, which is way on way on the other end. You can move through this by scrolling. I'm skipping through a lot of the basic controls for Blender because I'm assuming that you've done a little bit. So let me know if you have any questions on things that I'm doing. But we're going to change this from static to character. Click on actor. And then as of right now, there's not much we need to change here. I'm going to go ahead and make the collision bounds box and real fast we'll want to test this. I'm going to change this texture just so you can see things. What we're wanting to make sure of right now is that this box doesn't fall through. That means that it's actually detecting this object. So say if I move this up, I hit play which essentially makes the game play. It'll fall and it'll hit the platform, which means it's detecting it and the physics are working. Okay, you can hit exit to get out of that just in case you don't know. Alright, and the next thing we need to do, well, we might as well add a color to to our collision. I'm going to make it green. It just makes it easier to tell things apart. 
And now we need to go into our logic editor. So I'm changing this bottom part from timeline to logic editor. You do that from that drop down menu. And we're going to add a property. This will come in handy later. We won't be using it in this tutorial, but we're going to go character collision. And that is what we'll use when it runs it. We'll use it to run into things, so like picking up ammo and stuff like that, or getting hit by a bullet. That is where that comes in handy. Right, and we're going to add a sensor. We're going to go keyboard. And I'm going to be using A and D for my forward and backwards. So forward will be D, and I'll name, name the sensor forward. It might seem like it takes up a little bit more time in, than you need to name it, but once you get a complicated logic system going, you'll be glad that you named everything when you had the chance. And we're going to add an actuator and we're going to call it go use motion. You want to make sure you add a controller too. And you can name these two. It's actually a good idea. And this also. All right, we're going to change this from simple motion to character motion. And I'm going to go 0.1 for this first time. And uh, it depends on your scaling, really, how much motion you want. I'm going to test that right now. Um, yeah, that'll be fine for now. It's kind of moving a little bit fast. Yeah, it's moving fast. I'm going to put 0 0.05 and we'll check that. No, it didn't change it. Sorry about that. Yeah, I like that better. All right. And now we're going to add another sensor, a keyboard sensor. We're essentially going to do the same process, but reverse. We'll have the keyboard sensor A. Name it back. And you can hold down the middle mouse button and move around in this window. So if you're wondering how I do that, you can also use the ease button. and character motion again and we're going to go negative 0 0.05 and you can minimize these so you have more room and we'll, we'll add another keyboard sensor with W which is going to be our jump kind of just like in old arcade games and other side scrollers your up button essentially was jump which is what we're going to use here Let's see. motion again, character motion, and just this jump button, which the jump height you would actually control in the physics. So jump force is at 10. All right, and we'll just need to connect that and name everything. And now we'll test that. The jump's a little bit high. So, like I said, we can adjust that here. Try five. Mm 
I don't know. Might be our angle. Yeah, I don't like that, and it's double jumping, so I'm going to try eight. You'll probably have to find your own balance. And one thing you can do so it doesn't do the double jumping thing is put in a triggering mode and pulse so that, let's see, let's try that, 25. Should only do it when you, every so often, but it's not seeming to work. Let's try the tap. Yeah, so every time you tap it, you can't hold down it and jump. That works a lot of time, a lot of times. But, yep, there's your motion set up for you. You can adjust it however you want. Just get it to work the way you want it to. And our next tutorial will be on setting up a firing system and possibly an ammunition system. I'm not sure how far we'll get in the amount of time that I'll have. But, yep. Uh, like this video if it was helpful and subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.